Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing receptor tyrosine kinases. Okay, so we are currently looking at the processes uh, downstream of the activation of a receptor tyrosine kinase. And we are currently looking at the PI3 kinase AKT mTOR pathway. Okay, so we've now got activated um, protein kinase B, or AKT, which is a serine threonine kinase once active. Remember, this is the catalytic uh, domain of the protein kinase B. Okay, and uh, this is now going to go into the cytoplasm and it's going to activate uh, a complex of proteins known as the mTORC1. Okay, and the mTORC1 stands for, this is a large name, the mammalian. Okay, that's the M. Then the T is for target, the O is for of, and then the R is for rapamycin. So mTOR stands for the mammalian target of rapamycin. And then the C stands for complex, and then the 1 for 1. So mTORC1 is the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1. Okay, now this is a large complex, which is a serine threonine kinase enzyme itself. Okay, and one of the key proteins at the center of the whole mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1 is the mammalian target of rapamycin itself. Okay, so we'll start off by drawing this enzyme. Okay, so here we have uh, the mammalian target of rapamycin, or mTOR. Okay, now this is the portion that actually, well, this is the protein within this mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1 that is actually the serine threonine kinase. Okay, so everything else that we're going to add on to the mammalian target of rapamycin, that's just regulating this one central subunit, basically. So this is a serine threonine kinase. So again, it's capable of adding phosphate groups onto serine and threonine residues within proteins. Okay, right. So now let's look at the accessory proteins that are stuck onto the mammalian target of rapamycin uh, enzyme in the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1. Okay, so uh, firstly, we'll start off with Raptor. Okay, so Raptor stands for the regulatory associated protein of mTOR. So let's try and write this all down here. So the R is for the regulatory. Okay. Uh, the A is for associated, okay? The P is for protein, so the regulatory associated protein. And then the TOR is for of mTOR, so we take the TOR um, from mTOR. So the regulatory associated protein of the mammalian target of rapamycin, that's what RAPTOR here is short for. Okay, right. So that's one of the uh, subunits that's associated with the mammalian target of rapamycin in this mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1. Okay, right. The next protein I want to talk about that is bound in mTOR is known as MLST8. Okay, and MLST8 stands for mammalian lethal. That's the ML. Okay, then the uh, ST stands for with SEC13, okay, protein 8, okay, so the S is for SEC13, uh, the T I assume comes from protein, okay, and then the 8 is for 8, so this is the mammalian lethal with SEC13 protein 8, so I'll colour this one in, in blue, okay, so here is the mammalian lethal with SEC13 protein 8, or MLST8. Okay, then uh, attached to the mammalian target of rapamycin, we also have a protein called PRAS40, okay, which I'll put here. Now, uh, PRAS40 uh, stands for uh, the proline rich um, act um, substrate 40. Okay, so uh, PR stands for the proline rich, okay. Um, then the A stands for AKT, which remember is another name for protein kinase A. And then the S stands for substrate, so the proline-rich AKT substrate 40. 
That's what PRAS40 stands for. P for proline, R for rich, uh, A for AKT, S for substrate, and then 40 for 40. Okay, so we'll colour in PRAS40 in orange here. Okay, and that's another member of this mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1. Okay, then also bound to the mammalian target of rapamycin in the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1. The final protein is a protein which is abbreviated to DEPTOR. Okay, now what does DEPTOR stand for? DEPTOR stands for the DEP domain, okay, containing a uh, mTOR interacting protein. Okay, so this is the DEP domain containing mTOR interacting protein. So the DEP is for the DEP domain containing, and the TOR then is for mTOR interacting protein. Okay, so this is another protein uh, that is associated with the mammalian target of rapamycin in this mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1. Okay, so this is DEP domain containing mTOR interacting protein. And we'll cover this one in in red here. Okay, right, so that now completes the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1. So these things are sitting within the cytoplasm of your cells, and at the moment they are not active, okay, but we're going to see how they can become activated by the mammalian target of rap... Sorry, not by this, by protein kinase B, which we have now got uh, activated here. Okay, right. Uh, now, the first thing to say is that it is not well understood what all of these accessory subunits here are actually doing, okay? Um, the main functional protein is, as I say, the central one here, the mammalian target of rapamycin. This is a serine threonine kinase. All the other bits are just accessory bits that you've stuck on the side. Now, it is known that PRAS40, the proline-rich AKT substrate 40, and DEPTOR, the DEP domain containing mTOR interacting protein, these are negative regulators. Okay, so when they are bound to mTOR in this way, they are actually decreasing the activity of mTOR. So by binding to mTOR, they stop it from actually adding phosphate groups onto serine and threonine residues. Okay, so um, firstly what I want to say is once you activate the mammalian target of rapamycin, usually what it actually does is it phosphorylates these negative regulators itself. So it phosphorylates the DEPTOR and the PRAS40, and they then loosen their bonds to it. Okay, it's not clear whether they fully fall off, but they certainly loosen their interactions with it. They change their interactions with mTOR, and they stop negatively regulating it. Okay, so this is uh, this functions as a positive feedback loop whereby the activation of the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1 can actually increase its own activation by phosphorylating these uh, subunits that are associated with it and therefore um, increasing the activity of the mammalian target of rapamycin. Okay, so this is a positive feedback loop. Okay, right, and clearly, of course, uh, this uh, enzyme will not be phosphorylating its own PRAS40 and its own DEPTOR. It will phosphorylate the PRAS40 and DEPTOR on another mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1. Okay, so it's not a case of one mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1 activates itself. Uh, it will be activating other mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1s, but overall positively feeding back the activation of mTORC1 within uh, the cell. Okay, right. Now, we want to see how protein kinase B is going to activate the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1 then. So it's going to do this in two ways, okay? Um, and I should say that this is still controversial. It's not fully understood how protein kinase B activates the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1. But what is known is that it phosphorylates PRAS40, Okay, so it phosphorylates the proline-rich AKT substrate 40. And when protein kinase B phosphorylates PRAS40, it causes PRAS40 
to fall off the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1. And that then stops PRAS40 from negatively regulating the mammalian target of rapamycin enzyme at the center here, and that increases the activity of the mammalian target of rapamycin enzyme. However, that's not thought to be the main way that uh, protein kinase B enzymes activate mammalian targets of rapamycin complex 1s. Okay? Instead, the main way that it's thought that protein kinase B uh, activates the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1s is by um, phosphorylating something known as the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 2. So let me just explain this here. So basically, there is a complex of two proteins uh, known as the tuberous sclerosis complex. Okay, and this consists of two proteins known as the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 1 and the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 2. Okay, and they dimerize together. So overall, the dimer of these two proteins here is known as the tuberous sclerosis complex. And for short, that's abbreviated to the TSC. T for tuberous, S for sclerosis, and then C for complex. Okay, so we have these two proteins here, tuberous sclerosis complex protein 1 and the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 2 in green here. Now this complex of these two proteins usually inactivates a monomeric G protein. So we're now going to see another monomeric G protein. Okay, and this monomeric G protein is called REB. Okay. So, REB is a monomeric G protein, which means that, once again, it can be in two states. It can be in an on state, where it has guanosine triphosphate bound to it. Okay, so here is the on state. Or it can be in the off state, where it has guanosine diphosphate bound to it. Okay, now, REB itself is a GTPase. All G proteins, monomeric G proteins and the alpha subunits of heterotrimeric G proteins, they are all GTPase enzymes, which means that they catalyze the hydrolysis of GTP to GDP and an inorganic phosphate. So, basically, the Reb protein is capable of turning itself off by hydrolyzing the GTP that is bound to it down to GDP. Okay, so all that you need to do in order to turn the REB G protein off is to activate the REB G protein's intrinsic GTPase activity, and then it will turn itself off. Okay, this is what the tuberous sclerosis complex does. Okay, so it activates the um, REB monomeric G protein here to inactivate itself. It activates the intrinsic GTPase activity uh, of the REB G protein. The REB G protein then breaks down the GTP into GDP and inorganic phosphate. The GDP remains bound whilst the inorganic phosphate goes into the cytoplasm. Okay, now the REB um, monomer G protein has turned itself off. Okay, so the tuberous sclerosis complex then is what's known as a REB um, GAP, okay, so it's called a REB GAP. Now, what does GAP stand for? GAP stands for GTPase Activating Protein. So we've seen GEFs, which were guanine nucleotide exchange factors, okay, we saw that SOS was a RAS GEF. We're now seeing the tuberous sclerosis complex, uh, which is a um, REB gap, okay? So it's doing the opposite. It activates uh, monomeric G proteins to turn themselves off, specifically the REB monomeric G protein. Okay, so gap is short for GTPase activating protein here. Okay, right. Uh, so... Uh, the tuberous sclerosis complex, therefore, is involved in turning these REB monomeric G proteins off. Okay, now, protein kinase B is going to inactivate the tuberous sclerosis complex, and the way it's going to do this is it's going to phosphorylate the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 2. Okay, so it phosphorylates the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 2, and when it does this, it causes the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 2 to associate with a protein that we've actually met before, okay? The protein 1433, that protein that was associated with inactive RAF kinase enzymes, okay? So what's going to happen then is 
When protein kinase B becomes active, it's going to phosphorylate the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 2. The tuberous sclerosis complex protein 2 is then going to associate with 1433, and this interaction with 1433 then stops tuberous sclerosis complex 2 from being able to bind to tuberous sclerosis complex 1 and form the tuberous sclerosis complex. Okay, so now you don't get tuberous sclerosis complexes forming, and therefore you don't get them activating Reb monomeric G proteins to turn themselves off. So Reb monomeric G proteins in the on state build up within the cytoplasm of the cell and somehow Reb monomeric G proteins in the on state activate the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1 uh, assemblies. Okay, so that's the main way that protein kinase B uh, activates the mammalian target of rapamycin complex 1. Okay, this enzyme now, this incredible serine threonine kinase, this goes off and uh, activates translational machinery. Okay, so it, for instance, causes an increase in the number of ribosomes that you produce. Okay, so it makes you make more ribosomes. It makes the cell make more ribosomes. So the number of ribosomes are going to go up. In addition, the existing translational machinery is going to become activated. Okay, so it's going to activate the translational machinery. Okay, so that you can translate more mRNA into proteins. So this pathway goes hand in hand with uh, the uh, RAS pathway that we've seen, because the RAS pathway causes the genetic changes, or rather the epigenetic changes, that you need in order to proliferate. But there's no point making more mRNA if you're then not going to actually be able to translate this mRNA into protein. So uh, the mammalian target of rapamycin then takes it apart upon itself to prepare the cell for increased translational output by increasing the number of ribosomes and also making the ribosomes which you have work harder effectively. And this is going to be pro-growth of that cell, basically. Okay, so this is the PI3 kinase AKT mTOR pathway. In the next video, what we're going to look at is another target of um, receptor tyrosine kinases, which is going to be phospholipase C gamma enzymes. And then what we'll move on to is um, looking at the desensitization of the receptor tyrosine kinases from the cell membrane in response to uh, stimulation of those receptor tyrosine kinases.